my name is Erica, and today I'm going to be doing my first ever playthrough of a game. Um, I've never actually done this before. Um, I do like these type of games, even though I don't really play them all that often. I used to play uh, Choices a lot back in like 2018, 2019, but then they rebranded to be more of like a steamy service, and I just, I'm not really interested in that. But I did notice that Netflix had a very similar concept. I believe the other type of game that this is called is Episode, and those are really fun to watch when other YouTubers do it. I think my favorite series is the one that Jenna Marbles did, and those are really fun. So, And I haven't really seen anyone talk about these games. Um, I probably should have looked this up before I started recording, but last time I checked, there's not a lot of playthroughs of these games. But yeah, I'm going to be trying out Netflix Stories, Emily in Paris, and there is Emily. And, he, and I did play the first episode of Leave Virgin River, just to kind of test it out, because Emily and Paris hadn't come out yet, the first episode, I guess, and it was kind of just what I expected. It's very romance-oriented, and I guess the story is pretty interesting, and then there's also all the characters from the show. I've never seen the show, but I did Google the characters, and yeah, they were all from the show. And essentially what it says right here is, um, Emily in Paris, when you move to Paris to accept a job at an esteemed fashion magazine, you find romance, surprises, and new friendships waiting for you. So, sounds like fun. It's listed as a comedy, drama, and romance. So, and just for profits, I've decided that I'm not gonna do, like, the, I'm gonna try and specifically do the, um, choices that I don't think pe most people will do. So I'm assuming I'm going to pick the least romantic options and the more, I guess, the least appealing to other people, what I think other people would do. Because I think people are going to play this game trying to get with, you know, Gabriel or um, Alfie and I, I or Kami, if you're into Kami or Mindy. But I'm going to be trying to create havoc. That's my goal. Not romance, but to create havoc in the world of Emily in Paris. Because I feel like most people are going to be playing with romance in mind. So that's what's gonna, that's going to make my playthrough maybe a little bit different. Maybe it won't. Maybe it'll just be like everyone else's. But I just decided that it would be fun to do um, something a little bit different. So let's just go ahead and begin. Okay, so I'm currently screen recording, so I hope this works. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit play story and... It's loading. Okay, what's my name? Which of you are my name? So what's funny? What's entertaining? But not offensive. <laughs> um, mm, hmm. You know who one of my all time favorite characters is? Alex Russo from Wizards of Waverly Place. I'm thinking Alex Russo, but also I'm not sure if I'm gonna make her look like Alex Russo. Let me think. So we're gonna name her Alex Russo, but I don't know if that is what we're gonna go with. What are your pronouns? That's a nice thing. What are your pronouns? That's a nice thing to ask. Um, she, her. Ooh, now I get to create my character. Um, oh, and I get to be a girl or a guy. This is the first body shape, second one, and the third one. Um, I think we're just gonna go with the second one. And skin color. Hoping they have like green or something. Um, should I just go with black to pale? Um, I'm looking at myself. I am pale myself. have a concept of my skin color. This is a nice skin color. I mean, all skin colors are nice, but I like this one. Face. There's a part of me that just wants to make like a very ugly character, but that would be mean. Like, that would just be so mean. Hmm. These faces are all really, like, <laughs> they're really good. Like, this is really well made. Okay, I see a face that I like. Was it this one? Okay. We have to get the purple eyes. This hair is really nice. Oh, the bangs. Hmm. 
Hmm. What should I give her? With a bob? <laughs> the bob reminds me of that one alien from Little Stitch. I forgot their name. I'm leaning towards the bob. I think the bob would be funny. Hmm. Not that there's anything wrong with having a bob. I had a bob throughout most of my childhood, but this is a really nice hair hairstyle. Um, yeah, some of these are just too nice. This is too nice. I thought this would be like worse. Where is the bob? The bob with the bangs, I think that would be the move. Yeah, this one, okay. Can we change her hair color? Okay, right here. <gasps> Cause it's blue. That's crazy. I want that. <laughs> and now we get to pick out what she's wearing. I want her to wear the ugliest thing, which is kind of like the first thing she was wearing. That's not no offense if you like that, but I just think that's a little off. She kind of what's the what is this? Okay. Hmm. Hmm. This looks like something Kamiya would wear, wear. And I have seen the first three seasons, and I've already seen the first three episodes of season um four but i i like to watch i don't like to binge i just i'll watch a new episode every single day that way i have something to look forward to for the next few days but i kind of want to dress her like this i think this is i think this is kind of the vibe we're going for but what about this like it's ugly i want her to dress ugly i want emily to have competition hmm okay go with that should we give her a bag? Yeah, let's give her a bag. Let's give her, you won't even be able to see them. Which is tragic. Hmm. I'm gonna give her earrings anyway. Oh, let's give her a necklace. Ooh, a little star one. Hmm. We give her a lot. Okay, yeah, that's good. Are you satisfied with your character? Yes. Of course. Ooh, Le Beau de Encore Library. See, when you're speaking French, you have to speak through your throat. I know that. Okay, Alex, I can't believe I'm finally in Paris. It all happened so fast. It still doesn't feel real. Getting offered my dream job in my dream city. Now I just need to get the keys to my dream apartment. Buzzing with excitement, you reach for the door handle and give it a pull, but it doesn't budge. Closed? What am I going to do now? And then you get the choices. Hang on the door, call the landlord, or pick the lock. <gasps> Let's pick the lock. <laughs> you glance around the courtyard, then step closer to the door, ready to pick the lock. You pull a hairpin from your purse, then quickly get to work. Que fatu. I don't know what that means. You spin around to find an older woman watching you with a stern expression. Going to go to jail, huh? She begins to yell at you in French, shaking her finger. Bonjour. I know th what this might look like, but I live here. <laughs> We're trying to break in. The woman continues to yell, and you start to panic when you recognize the word police. Oh, we're, we're gonna we're gonna be in the catacomb soon. Madame, s'il vous plaît. You turn to find two women walking towards you, smiling. One of them links her arm around through yours. Not sure what's going on. You listen while the other woman explains something in rapid French. The only words you can make out are American and new, but finally the woman nods. Bonvenue à Paris. I just said that terribly. She walks away with a slight eye roll. You turn, to the you turn to the mystery woman, mouth agape, and say, What did you tell her? Thank you. It's not what it looks like. I'm gonna say, it's not what it looks like. I really do live here, or I will once I get my keys. Someone was supposed to be here to give them to me this morning. <gasps> it's Mindy! <laughs> She's wearing Emily's hat from like season one, I think. <laughs> the woman laughs, shrugging. You'll find that morning commitments are a lot more flexible here than in America. You can't help but laugh, shaking your head. Is it that obvious I'm American? I don't even, I don't even know what kind of vibe my character has. 
Oh yeah. Oh, oh my God, that's Emily. <laughs> She's just in a like a like a bra underneath her suit. Okay, fashion, I guess. But only because we are too. Well, I am. Mindy is. I consider myself a citizen of the world. Chic, right? Anyway, I'm Emily, and this is Mindy. Welcome to Paris. I'm Alex. Emily motions to the door behind you. Jax owns a bookstore, but he won't be in for at least another hour. Who is Jax? An hour? I'll grab coffee, but I have to go to work. This is a nightmare. Um, we gotta complain. This is a nightmare. <laughs> I thought moving here was coming was going to be a dream come true. But now I'm starting to think it might be a nightmare. Sure, it can be rough at first, but Paris is amazing. I promise you'll love it. Especially now that you have two fabulous new friends. They must have they must have just loved my vibe, I guess. <laughs> we were just on our way to the cafe next door. You should come with us. I promise your first Parisian croissant will have you thinking this place is the dream again. Or your first Parisian love affair. Mindy, I thought you were going to say glass of champagne. Deciding your apartment can wait, you follow your new friends to the cave next door. This, this art style is super nice. You settle in at the cave, hoping that Emily and Mindy are right, and Paris is going to be everything you hoped. So tell us everything about it. Uh, so tell us everything, Alex. What brings you to Paris? I'm here for a job. I'm the new digital editor for Enchanté. Emily's jaw drops while Mindy gives you an impressed nod. Okay, so we're like, good. <laughs> oh my god, that's incredible. Enchanté is the most iconic fashion magazine in Paris. You must be thrilled. I am. It's an amazing opportunity. Plus, I got to move here, but I'm pretty nervous. Or I was ready for change. Um, I'm, 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 I'm gonna say I was ready for change. My life was starting to feel a little predictable. So I figured what better way to add some excitement than to move to Paris. I can totally relate. Paris is definitely more exciting than Chicago was. And you're here just in time for Paris Fashion Week. Enchanté always gets the most amazing backstage access. Consider me très jalouse. There's no way Emily from the show knows what that means. That was good, Em. Emily beams proudly, turning to you with an exclamation. I didn't have time to learn much French before I moved here, so I've been taking lessons. That's, that's not canon. I don't think she knows French in season four. <laughs> so far, she's picked up a, half, a halfway decent accent and a fully hunky man. Oh, really? Sign me up? I don't speak much French. That's one way to learn. That, saying that's one way to learn is like, <laughs> I don't know if that's going to be judgy or just be kind of like flirty. So I'm just going to say I don't speak much French. Um, maybe I should think about taking lessons too. I'm sure it would help out at work. Uh, excuse me? Didn't you hear what I said about the hunky man? You may have moved here for work, but Paris is really all about love, right, Em? They're, they're just very horny, I guess. Emily smiles and winks. I know about love yet. Then Alfie and I have definitely been having a good time. I thought she was talking about Gabriel. You all laugh and Emily shrugs. Honestly, though, my boyfriend Alfie was a surprise. I mean, he's gorgeous, obviously, but I didn't expect to fall for a British guy in France. I mean, France and London are, isn't, I mean, France and London are not that far apart. So it doesn't really surprise me. With the French dudes you were picking, it's a good thing Alfie made you switch up your type. Gabriel Shade. Only sticks her tongue out at Mindy and she laughs, turning her attention back to you. What about you, Alex? Me? Yes, you. How are we supposed to set you up with our friends if we don't know your type? Are you into buff hairy dudes? Fierce, leggy blonde chicks? Oh, she winks. Beautiful Chinese Korean woman with a great sense of style. 
You laugh as you consider her question. Okay, we're gonna pick, um, we're gonna pick our sexuality. I'm just gonna go with date all genders because I don't really care. Um, I'm open to dating anyone. Oh yes, love that. L'amour c'est l'amour. Do you know what you're looking for? A fun fling? I mean, I'm not really looking for anything. I'm just here to set the city on fire. A sweepy, a sweep you off your feet romance? No, Emily, I want to um steal from you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Unless it's, unless it's an option, then I'm picking it. I'm ready to fall in love. Keep it fun and flirty. Not looking for anything. I'm not looking for anything. Do you see the way we're dressed? Yeah. Do you see the way that we're dressed? We're we're here for work. I'm here for work, not a relationship. If something happens, it happens, but I'm not looking for anything. I respect that, although Paris does seem to have a way of making things happen. She stirs her coffee, a slow smile forming on her lips. Uh-oh, I know that look. Someone is scheming. I'm not scheming, I'm just... Her face lights up with an idea. Just thinking that Alex should come to the party tonight. Oh no. A party? I'd love to. That's so sweet. Or, I'm pretty tired. Um, I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I'm already exhausted and the day hasn't even officially started yet. I'm not sure I'm up for a party. Oh, come on. You're in Paris now. And you don't even have to go far. It's right here in the courtyard. Here, pressuring me. Here? That sounds so cool. Strange. Convenient. Let's say strange. Are street parties normal in Paris? Emily laughs and shakes her head. It's actually for Le Bevu de Encore. You know, the bookstore you were trying to break into this morning? Oh no. It's a, it's a fundraiser. Le Bevu de Encore and its owner, Jacques, are an iconic part of this community. The store has been in his family for almost 200 years, but Paris is expensive. And people buy all of their books online now. So Jocks has been having a little trouble making ends meet, but we're going to help. Your angel, huh? People are buying tickets to the party and we're going to have a silent auction at the end. She pulls a ticket from her purse and writes her name on it in looping cursive. I guess we don't even have a choice now, huh? Here, my treat. Aw, oh, thank you. That's so generous, but I want to contribute or I'm glad I moved here. Um, um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm glad I moved here. I don't think I could have picked a better neighborhood to move to. Emily smiles in agreement. The people here really have a way of making Paris feel like home. And don't let the fact that the party is in the courtyard fool you. It's going to be the sole way of the season. Emily planned the whole thing, and my girl loves a reason to get dressed up. She's always wearing something. Guilty. And I'm hoping Enchante's hottest new hire does too. Well, of course I do. It depends on the occasion. Not really. Not really. Do you see us? <laughs> do you see us? Do you see this fit? Can you see it? We're here. We're not here to dress nice. We're here to start another, um, strike. <laughs> I prefer to leave the modeling to the pro I prefer to leave the modeling to the professionals. Besides, I don't have anything to wear. My things haven't arrived yet, and I only bought work clothes with me on the plane. Maybe next time? Are you kidding? Just come get ready with us. Dude, are they gonna make me pay for the outfits? <laughs> I didn't, they didn't ask for my credit card. They didn't ask for my card information. I guess I didn't think that through. That was the thing with all the the choices and with episodes you had to pay for like all the good quality um choices and all the nice outfits and stuff and it's like damn and uh, money really does buy you a better life huh <laughs> it was showing kids capitalism okay our closet is more packed with clothes than the loom during tourist season come on it'll be fun we can gossip about your first day in paris well that sounds great. I'll try to make it if you insist. Well, we kind of have no choice, huh? If you insist. It sounds like the two of you have already decided for me. <laughs> Mindy Wiggs. Now you're getting it. Emily reaches across the table and grabs your phone, typing quickly before handing it back to you. There. Now you have our numbers. She, mo she motions behind her to just 
across the courtyard. We live in that building with the big wooden doors. She sighs as she glances back at her phone. Shoot, that's my boss, Sylvie. I better run, but we'll see you tonight, okay? Remember, this is Paris. Don't work too hard on your first day. She winks, and the three of you say your goodbyes before you head back to the bookstore. You breathe a sigh of relief when you see the bookstore sign has been turned around open. Finally, I was starting to worry I might never see my apartment. This is a really nice drawing. This, this bookstore looks so nice. A small bell jingles when you open the door. Stepping inside feels like stepping back in time. It's filled with books written in all different languages and it smells like a crisp fall day. Bonjour, puis je vous adore? I thought Jocks was going to be like one of our love interests, but this is kind of like an older name. I don't think he's supposed to be your love interest then. An older beast bespect bespectacled? I don't know that word. Man is looking at you expectantly. I think it means glasses, because spectacle is glasses, but I've never heard of bespectacled. Hmm. That must be Jocks. Shoot, I wish I'd spent more time brushing up on my French. We're just as bad as Emily, huh? We suck. I'll try to respond in French, respond in English, introduce myself. Let's try to respond in French. It's worth a try, at least. Bonjour, mon nom, je m'appelle. Ah, you must be a new American tenant. I'm Jacques. We suck. <laughs> he smiles warmly, motioning for you to join him at the counter. Do not worry, your French will improve. I've seen Emily in Paris. She's been in Paris for like five years now. She speaks, she knows four words. So, I don't know. <laughs> Suddenly, a man steps out from behind a bookshelf. Suddenly, a man steps out from behind a bookshelf, taking you by surprise. Okay, this must be our little interest. An American in Paris, a classic to be sure. He has a thick French accent and smiles at you as he sets a pen and stack of note cards on the counter. So, does Jacques not have a thick French accent? Because it was only pointed out that he had a French, had a, had a thick French accent. Wow, he is so handsome. <laughs> Looks like a movie star. Scared me. Say scared me. She, she almost gave me a heart attack. Bonjour, I'm Oliver. Welcome to Paris. I hope our city has given you a pleasant reception. Thank you. I'm loving it so far. It's been okay. I'm enjoying this. Welcome. Say it's been okay. Things haven't been exactly what I expected. Oh, we're gonna complain. I love complaining. I find that the unexpected often leads to the most memorable parts of life. Why is his like shirt, like he's showing his chest hair. I mean, he's animated, so he's not, there is no chest hair to be seen, but if this was real life, he'd probably have chest hair and you'd be able to see it, which is a take considering he's wearing like a business suit. So business suit, business suit, but make it slutty. Am I allowed to say that word on YouTube? I don't even know. It's so wonderful to have you here. The, you young people are just what this neighborhood needs. You turn back to Jacques as he hands you your key. There are two lovely girls who live just across the courtyard. Americans as well. Lovely, lovely girls. Okay, this guy's the sweetest. I can see why Mindy... Um, okay, this guy's the sweetest. I can see why Emily and Mindy want to help him. I met them this morning. They're almost as lovely as your bookstore. Oh, you flatter me. So tell me, what brings you to Paris? He smiles warmly, like he's truly interested in hearing your answer, not just making small talk. I'm in Paris for work, to live in a new city, for hence women like you. Well, let's just say for work. I moved here to start my dream job. Congratulations, I wish you all the best. I built most of my career in this city. She'll whisper opportunities to you if you listen carefully. If you're careful to listen. This guy's smooth. Um, let's just say he's nice. It's refreshing to meet someone so easy to talk to. Suddenly the alarm on your phone begins to blare. Oh no, I need to get ready for work. I'm sorry, but I have to get going. I hope I see you again. Nice to meet you both. Or goodbye. Let's say nice to meet you both. I'll see you around. I should be going as well. Must you? Oh, all right. I'll see you in a couple days. Oh, he looks sad. 
Oliver turns back to you, and to your surprise, he reaches for your hand. It was a true pleasure to meet you, Alex. I do hope we'll meet again. Guess that's our Gabriel, huh? I hope he doesn't have a girlfriend. He raises your hand and brings it to his lips. You still as they brush your knuckles, then squeeze his hand, curtsy, pull away. I think curtsy would be so funny. Oliver gives you a surprise smile as you break into a curtsy. <laughs> oh my god, did I really just curtsy? <laughs> Not our character being embarrassed. You laugh lightly as he straightens. I think you scared him. Sorry, was that weird? I'm not really sure how to react to men kissing my hand. Oliver chuckles and you realize he's still holding your hand. I apologize if my French forwardness is a bit much. I forget that Americans are a bit more reserved in their affections. Are we? I mean, we're kind of loud and we do like to hug. Like, hugging is kind of an American thing, I feel. That's okay. I like it. We're in Paris after all. But yes, we are. Let's just say we're in Paris after all. I'll just have to get used to the, thing, the French way of doing things. Oliver's eyes are filled with laughter as he releases your hand. In that case, I'm happy to have help with your cultural immersion. It's been a pleasure. He turns to Jacques, who has been watching your interaction with a smile. Oh no, he ships us, huh? Jax, I'll see you later. With a final smile in your direction, Oliver makes his way out the door. Jax watches him with an expression of pride. Are they related? A wonderful man. He's been coming here since he was a boy. So they're basically related. He leaves excellent recommendations as well if you're ever looking for a special read. You glance at the stack of note cards Oliver left on Jack's desk as he shoots you towards the, as he shoots you towards the stairs. Now go, go, you have an important day to repair for. apartment? It's nice. I wish this stuff was real. I wish I could go to Paris and live in an apartment this nice. That didn't cost me like eight billion dollars. Any doubt that you're really in Paris evaporates when you walk through the door and see <gasps> the Eiffel Tower. <gasps> yeah, the Eiffel Tower. Oh my god, this is amazing. I only have a moment. Uh, I didn't read that. <laughs> the view will have to wait. It's time to get dressed for my first day of work. Ooh, what should we wear? Floating. Are we gonna change our hair too? Be pretty. What should we wear to work? Hmm. Should we get rid of our bangs? The same Bob haircut, just no bangs. We got we cut them off. What if we just had different hair color? Too. I kind of like the blue. The blue is kind of. The blue, the blue is kind of giving. I like the blue. Okay, what should we wear to work? What is that? Hmm. These don't even match. Like the bottom, the bottoms and the top. Hmm. What is the worst thing on here? Did, oh, did we unlock? Oh, we unlocked way more outfits. It's kind of cool. How come? Did, I guess the shoes. That was the day. Can we pick up? What do we want like this to work? Oh, that was my tummy. Oh, we got. Some more we're not even holding it are we huh we got lots more things can't even see them mm. Mm. okay okay this looks terrible let's go where's the where's that one meme of the one i forgot who it was but <laughs> they're like yeah this sounds like shit Put it out. <laughs> That's me with this character's outfits. You check your outfit one final time, the Eiffel Tower reflected in the mirror behind you. Then you head out the door. I'm wearing overalls right now, so maybe <laughs> maybe I don't have the best fashion sense anyway, but you know. Outside, you double check the map on your phone to be sure you're headed in the right direction. You're so focused on the screen, you don't notice a gap in the cobblestone before it's too late. Oh no, we're gonna fall. Oh no. You brace yourself to hit the ground, but a felt hand grabs your elbow just in time, steadying you. Who is that? Ooh, it's a lady. She has nice cheekbones. Those shoes are very sturdy. I forgot what shoes I picked out. You looked up to find an unfamiliar face staring at you with a concerned expression. 
Phew, that was close. But that woman is hot, and she's very close. Today is a mess. Okay, we're just gonna say today is a mess. I need to say to end so I can get home and hit the reset button. Her hand lingers on your elbow a moment longer, her eyes locked on yours, but then she pulls away. She shakes her head in a domnishment. It's an Emily in Paris episode game. Uses big words. You're going to break your neck if you weren't more careful. Maybe. You should stay close then. Time to go sh shoe shopping. But what's it to you? Oh my god, should I be mean to her? I do want to be mean. Why do you care if I break my neck? Enemies to lovers, <laughs> story lark. The intensity of her gaze as it breaks over across you almost makes you shiver, but then she frowns. I don't. She takes a step away and you realize you're in front of a flower shop. Do you work here? I just moved in down the street. She turns her back in reply and you frown. Okay, so definitely not everyone in Paris is friendly. I mean, we kind of did start off kind of mean. <laughs> Oh, she's giving us a flower. They're very yellow. But then she turns back around with a bundle of flowers in her hand and offers them to you. Buttercups. Welcome to Paris. Do me a favor. If you ever need flowers, just ask. I'd rather not have to report you for picking my lock. Oh no. Your jaw drops as she turns back to, to the flowers behind her. Oh my god, she saw me this morning. I'll say, the flowers are beautiful. Someone's been watching me, or, well, I should be going. So let's, we gotta go, we gotta go. I guess I'll see you around, perhaps. She, she might call us the cops. Perplexed, you begin to walk away, unsure what to make of her. But you can feel her eyes on you as you make your way down the street and you can't resist another look. Strut confidently away or keep walking. We gotta we gotta strut confidently. We gotta make sure that that um she knows we can run. <laughs> you smile to yourself as you strut confidently away, as if the sidewalk is your runway. If she wants to watch, I may as well give her a show. I mean, that's not what I meant, but you know, but it works. You shift your focus to work as you go, but your strange encounter with the forest lingers in your mind. Oh, we're heading to the office. What is this? Ooh. Sims. <laughs> My hair's kind of asleep now. These episodes are so long. The Virgin River episode was like 30 minutes. It's like so long. And I've already been recording for 30 minutes. You look up your office online before arriving, but nothing could have prepared you for seeing it in person. This is unbelievable. The building looks like it should con Ten movie stars are priceless works of art, not offices. I can't believe this is where I'm going to work. This place is incredible, intimidating, and huge. Let's say huge. It's definitely a step up from my office back home. Eager to see the rest, you make your way inside. Fancy. Wow. The inside of the office is even more ornate than its facade, and you pause to admire the decor. How sweet. The American is speechless. With a start, you find you turn to find an impossibly chic woman watching you coolly. Oh no. You must be Alex. She kind of looks like an actress. I don't know who. Like, her face is kind of giving Sophia Carson. But, like, with blue eyes. If you, can, if you see what I'm imagining, or am I going crazy? You must be Alex. She purses her flawlessly painted lips, clearly less than thrilled by your arrival. She's like a young Sylvie. I'm Chloe, Miss Moreau's executive assistant and right hand. Welcome to Enchante. Hi, Chloe. Nice to meet you. I hope I'm not late. What a warm welcome. Let's just say, what a warm welcome. Oh no, I didn't know they, we got points for that. I hope we fight at the end. You really know how to roll out the welcome mat. She wrinkles her nose at your sarcasm. Is that a joke? You'll have to forgive me if I don't laugh. In Paris, we have a more elevated sense of humor. Damn, she called us trash. Okay, I'm definitely not imagining it. This girl is rude. 
but I know how to handle this. Fill her with kindness. Two can play that game, or I'll just ignore her. Let's say two play game. Two can play at that game. She can be as she can be as rude as she wants, but if he's going to dish it out, she better be able to take it too. She's gonna be our enemy, huh? But before he can say anything else, the sound of stilettos on marble fills the room. Chloe's demeanor immediately shifts from sour to sickly sweet. Leah, good morning. You turn to find Leah Moreau, editor-in-chief of Enchanté, looking as glamorous as she did in posing. Wow, she looks just like her picture. I mean, duh. <laughs> I was just welcoming Alex and telling her how thrilled we are she'll be bringing an American perspective to Enchanté. An expression you can't place flickers over Leah's face and she nods at Chloe. Yes, I'm sure you were. That will be all, Chloe. Her dismissal is polite but firm, and Chloe shoots you a final glare before excusing herself. Welcome, Alex. It's a pleasure to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you too, Miss Morrell. You're my idol. The office is amazing. Or shall we get started? Oh, let's just say the office is amazing. I can't believe I get to work in such a beautiful place every day. Leah looks slightly uncomfortable. Yes, it's quite lovely. And please, call me Leah. We don't share this American love of honorifics here in, here in Paris. Of course, I'm still getting to handle all the culture here, but don't worry, I'm a fast learner. That's why. Thank you so much for this, for this amazing opportunity, Leah. I can tell you how excited I am to launch Enchanté's very first digital edition together. Damn, it's behind. I feel like every single magazine has a, dig has a digital like version of it now. Leah's brows furrows. Yes, about that. Something about her tone makes your stomach drop. We're already fired, huh? I apologize for the miscommunication, but I don't feel Enchanté is in need of additional addition. Wait a minute. What? Dude, we've been in Paris for like maybe eight hours, and they're already gonna fire us. I admit the world of print is changing, but this magazine has a legacy to uphold. While screens and social media may be en vogue now, we don't we didn't become a staple of French culture by bowing to fads and trends. No digital edition? But that's my whole job. I'm sorry, Leah, but I'm confused. You must be joking. I still have a job, right? Let's, let's just say I'm confused. If I'm not going to be working on the first digital edition, if I'm not going to be working on the first digital edition, what am I going to be doing? Leah sighs, and the sound is anything but reassuring. We're fired. We're fired. The board feels Enchanté needs an online presence, and therefore a digital editor, but I disagree. It appears they've sent you as a misguided way to try and persuade me. There's no easy way to say this, Alex, but I can't offer you the role of digital editor because it doesn't exist. Wow. The room begins to spin as you take in Leah's words. Who's paying for a permit? Who's paying for her ticket back home? Are we going to pay for that? That would suck. Oh my god. I moved all the way for Paris. Uh, oh my god, I moved all the way to Paris for a job that doesn't even exist? This can't be happening. What am I going to do now? I know this must be a shock. Your heart is racing as you turn to Leah and you beg her to reconsider shrug cockily or respond confidently. You gotta shrug cockily. I don't know what that means. Oh, she's like that. You shrug, feeding an expression of confident indifference. Fine, but it's your loss. Oh, really? Why would we say that? Why would we, why would we say that? I mean, I, I picked to say that, but why would we say that? I'm good at my job. The best. I uprooted my entire life to move here because I truly believe we can create something great. But if you don't see what a huge mistake you're making, that's not my problem. A digital edition would honor Enchanté's legacy, not tarnish it. When you realize that, give me a call. When you realize that, give me a call. Leah gives you an appraising once over and something in her expression shifts slightly. All right then, convince me. What? You hold your breath as she gives you a, the slightest of smiles, offering a challenge. Convince me that Enchanté needs a digital editor and I'll consider you for the position. Memories of your first few hours in Paris flash through your mind. The new friends you've already made. There's no way I'm giving up on Paris. Not that easily. We've talked to everyone for like maybe 10 seconds. It's, it, Alex, it, we're gonna be fine. 
but you know. I have to think of a way to convince Leah and fast. Do we get timed options? Leah looks at you expectantly. Well, you tilt your head to the side, returning Leah's challenging expression. You want me to convince you that you need an online presence and a digital letter to manage it. Well, think of your readers. It's all in numbers. It's about accessibility. Hmm. Let's say it's all in numbers. At the end of the day, it's a simple math, really. The average person checks their phone over the average person checks their phone over 100 times a day. That's a lot. Compare that to the single issue of Enchanté they get each month. You want to create a lifestyle for your readers, right? To be part of every choice they make. From what they put on the morning, from what they put on in the morning to what moisturizer they use at night. That is our goal, yes. I don't know about you, but I'm more likely to take advice from someone I interact with every day than someone I see once a month. Leah taps her chin, considering, and you hold your breath until finally she speaks. I will admit, I see your point. Being an integral part of our readers' lives is at the core of Enchanté's values. Still, I worry you're thinking about our readers from an American perspective. Still, I worry you're thinking about our readers from an, Ameri from an American perspective, not a French one. Okay, okay, let me convince you, and if you're wrong, maybe I am. Let's see, let me convince you. Let me find a way to show you that all of your readers would benefit from a digital presence. And not just the American ones. Leah's gaze is intense as she looks at you as if asserting your merit until she nods. Well, it's a test then. A single social account as a trial run. On average, just over 10 million people read our magazine every month. That's a lot of people. If you can get 2 million followers, just a fifth of that, in the same amount of time, I'll consider creating a permanent digital space. 2 million followers? I love a challenge. I love a challenge. Easy. Is she crazy? Say, I love a challenge. We're, we gotta be like, Emily got like 30k in like a week. We can do this. It might not be easy, but I'm up for the challenge. Before you can respond, Chloe, who has been lurking nearby, chimes in. Pardon my interruption, but any imbecile with a smart home can go viral these days. Offensive. Even if Alex does somehow manage to get 2 million followers, how can we be sure they're the right ones? And not just Americans... Wait, is that? Oh. <laughs> And not just Americans who want to watch videos of cats playing the piano all day. You know what? Cats playing the piano and singing is one of the best parts of the internet. There are worse parts of the internet that you can be complaining about, Chloe. You roll your eyes, making your ir irritation clear. Well, Chloe, I appreciate your concern. Who asked you? Who doesn't love cats? Let's say who doesn't love cats. You're thinking small. Put a cat in a Versace beret, and who's to say it can't go viral and represent Enchante? Chloe forces a smile, clearly not wanting to show her true nature in front of Leah. She's kind of two-faced. An interesting perspective. I appreciate your concern, Chloe, but as with all things at Enchante, I will have the final say. Two million followers guarantees an opening of Enchante's first digital editor, but not who will fill it. Leah turns to you, the fire of challenge in her eyes. So what do you say, Alex? Are you up for the challenge? Two million followers in four weeks? Piece of cake, I won't leave down. Do I have a choice? To say piece of cake. I could do that in my sleep. Do she really like this? Leah chuckles lightly. I admire your confidence. With the matter closed, Leah moves on to other business. Our first fashion week event is tomorrow and we'll need all hands on deck. Everything needs to be perfect if we want to keep suffering happy. Who the heck is that? As Leah details the event schedule, your mind is elsewhere making plans for the social account. When she finally dismisses you, you make your way from the office feeling more confident than ever, determined to succeed, overcome with nerve. Say, determined to succeed. I'm going to show Leah that I deserve this job. Damn. This is very Emily Horobus. Your mind is working overtime as you make your way back to your apartment. 
If I'm going to start proving myself, there's no better time than the present. You pull out your phone and quickly create a new profile. You pull out your phone and quickly create a new profile for Enchante. Time for my first post. Oh, do we get to make it? Oh my god. What should we start the post? I like the door. What is this? Oh, we can put a filter on it. Oh. Hashtag hot Paris Paris hashtag hot Paris hashtag Paris eats hashtag fashion week Paris. Pick a caption for the new post. BRB searching for this dreamy shade and nail polish form. Open the door to this season's fashion. Paris to Tim. I like to open the door. Yes. Post uploaded. Uploaded. It's got 217 followers. 164 likes and 95% of followers loved this post. You take a deep breath as the post goes live. You smile as likes and followers immediately begin to roll in. Unrealistic. This would have gotten like maybe two likes from random bot accounts in two days. But you know, this is a fantastical word. This is this is the fantastical world of Emily and Paris. Satisfied that the page is off to a good start, you head back towards your apartment. When you reach the courtyard, the florist is outside, arranging what appears to be centerpieces. I should say something flirty, say hi, ignore her. Should we be mean? Yeah, let's be mean. Ignore her. Things were awkward enough earlier. I don't want I don't need a repeat. Oh, she's about to send us another flower. You don't say anything as you walk by, but to your surprise, she turns around holding flowers. Here, in case you need it. She extends pale purple hydrangeas in your direction. Okay, now we gotta be nice to her. <laughs> That's two sets of flowers. Thanks, but why would I need them? They're almost as cute as you. What are you making? Let's say, what are you making? Are those centerpieces? She nods, then abruptly turns back to her work. They're for an event tonight. If you'll excuse me, I really need to finish them. All right, well, thanks for the flowers. Until next time, I won't bother you again. Let's just say thanks for the flowers. They really are beautiful, thank you. You look up from the flowers and find her looking over her shoulder, her gaze focused solely on you. They are. She clears her throat, turning back around. Make sure you put them in water. More confused than ever, you turn and make your way across the courtyard. As you walk away, you realize that you still don't even know her name. Is she trying to be mysterious or is she just aloof? Either way. I'm definitely into her. I'm intrigued by her or she's not for me. Let's just say I'm intrigued by her. If there's a mystery there, I think I'll, I'd like to figure it out. Oh, is this Emily's apartment? <laughs> they let us in. Oh, what is Emily wearing? Alex! Emily greets you with a warm hug as if you've already been friends for a lifetime. Wait, can I click on these? Ambitious and also American, Emily also moved to Paris to pursue her dream job. She's encountered some bumps along the way, but her faces but faces each problem she meets head on it, armed with her bright personality and even brighter fashion sense. Oh interesting. Wait, so Oliver likes us just as much as Chloe? No. I can make notes. So what about this? We have one post. Okay, my sorry. Emily greets you with a warm hug as if you've already been friends for a lifetime. Welcome to our humble apartment. Minnie emerges from the kitchen, a bottle and three glasses in her hands. I feel like we're interrupting something. They're like both in lingerie. Champagne? It's the cheap stuff. Thanks, Minnie. What's the occasion? But I'll pass. I need it after my day. I'll say what's the occasion. Are we celebrating? Minnie grins as she pours you a glass. This is Paris, babe. That's the only occasion we need. Emily holds up her glass and you and Mindy follow suit. Two new friends and a, and a, two new friends and a successful event tonight. The three of you clink glasses. As Mindy takes a sip of hers, her eyes grow wide. Excuse me, where did that come from? 
She points to the hundred inches you hadn't realized you were still holding. Oh my god, don't tell me you already have a lover. Tell us everything. Well, do you know the florist? She's not my lover yet. It's nothing. It's just flowers I picked up on the way home. Sorry to disappoint. Mindy looks disappointed, but Emily raises an eyebrow. Dude, I think she's stalking us. She's like joking you. It wouldn't happen to be from Audrey, wouldn't it? The florist on the corner. <laughs> she's so scary. Audrey? Well, that solved that mystery. I'm sorry, so you met Audrey and she gave you the most gorgeous flowers I've ever seen? But she didn't bother to introduce herself? Pretty much. Is that weird? There, there were other flowers. She's impossible to read. Let's say she's impossible to read. One second, she's giving me a flower, and the next, she won't even speak to me. Audrey is quiet. That's one way of putting it. Shush. She keeps to herself mostly, but I think the right person could get her to open up. And you think I'm the right person? Emily winks, holding up a red stiletto. If the shoe fits? Yeah, well, I do feel drawn to her. We'll see. This one doesn't. Let's we'll just say we'll see. There could be something there, but it's too early to know anything for sure. Yeah, Emily, stop pestering the poor woman. Me? You started it. You all laugh as Minnie blows Emily a kiss. Okay, fine. New subject. How was your first day of work, Alex? For a few minutes, you'd almost forgotten about your lack of a job. As the reality of the situation hits you again, you groan. It wasn't great. Emily and Minnie nod sympathetically as you fill them in. I can relate. My first day was pretty terrible, too. But if I could win over the people at Savoir... Do you really think you won over Selby? I'm working on it. The point is you're going to be fine, Alex. Plus, Paris Fashion Week is the perfect time to attract new followers. Think of all the cool behind the scenes stuff you'll have access to. That's a good point. Of course it is. Now stop worrying and let's find you the perfect outfit. This episode is so long. Oh, I, they already picked out my outfit for me, I guess. What should we do? Okay, we got no choice. Ooh. This episode's so long, I've already been filming for 52 minutes. Minnie grins as you join her and Emily at the mirror. Damn, we look good. She puts one arm through yours and one through Emily's and the three of you head to the party. The courtyard has been completely transformed for the party. Glittering lights and softly glowing candles illuminate a long table at its center. The centerpieces Audrey had been working on are literally lying the table. Emily, this is incredible, so romantic. Audrey's work, right? That's just incredible. I can't believe this is the same courtyard I walked through this morning. So Emily likes this a bit more. <laughs> she smiles proudly at the compliment. I can't take all the credit. It was a group effort. Speaking of, a tall man approaches carrying a, a covered tray that smells absolutely amazing. That's Gabriel. Damn, you really outdone yourself this time, Gabriel. I'm pretty sure they just heard my stomach growl all the way in Bordeaux. Emily laughs as he sets the trays on one of the tables. Alex, this is Gabriel. He owns a restaurant just across the street. He's an incredibly talented chef. Gabriel smiles as he extends his hand. I can't tell if that looks like the actor or not. <laughs> Does this look like him to you? I mean, you guys can see me recording, my screen recording, but you know. Emily here is biased, but it's a nice... No. Emily here is biased, but it's a pleasure to meet you, Alex. You too. I'm new to Paris. How did you two meet? This smells amazing. Let's say this smells amazing. I can't wait to try some. What is it? My grand my grandmother's secret scallop recipe, all the way from Normandy. Emily beams as she places a hand on Gabriel's arm. Gabriel is a fantastic chef. Gabriel shakes his head, leaning into her touch. Please, you flatter me. Minnie clears her throat, and Emily's cheeks flush as the two of them break away. Anyway, is Camille here yet? Not yet, but I'm sure she'll be here soon. Emily smiles brightly, but it doesn't quite reach her eyes. Gabriel's girlfriend Camille is our star auction item. She's auctioning off a date night. Oh. She glances at Gabriel, whose polite smile has turned into a frown. 
all for fun, of course. I see. What a great idea. You don't mind, Gabriel? Or what about you, Gabriel? Let's ask what he's feeling. Are you actually off a date, too? I'm sure you would have plenty of bitters. <laughs> you laugh, shaking his head. I'm flattered, but Camille is a bit more bold than I am. She would do anything to help a friend. <laughs> well, I wouldn't really consider them friends, but you know. Suddenly, Emily's face transforms. There you are! A handsome man in a fashionable suit makes his way across the courtyard. Oh, it's what's his face? Oh, it's Alfie! Hiya, Koopa! Should I say that in a British accent? He kisses Emily's cheeks, and her smile gets impossibly whiter. This is my boyfriend, Alfie. Alfie, this is our new American friend, Alex. Pleasure to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. I've heard a lot about you. Emily's a lucky woman. I love your accent. Me and Mr. I love your accent. I only expect to hear French accents in Paris. Well, Paris is very multicultural. You're going to find people all over the world there, but yeah. Alfie laughs. Cooper, Cooper loves it, too, don't you, babe? <laughs> what accent was that? Emily blushes as Alfie pinches her waist and she leans into a sigh. I hate to interrupt the love fest, but who is that? Minnie points across the courtyard, practically salivating, and you turn to find Oliver. That's Oliver. I'm sorry. Is it Olivier? <laughs> I've been saying Oliver this whole entire time. I'm sorry. One day in Paris and you've already met the sexiest man I've ever seen. What's his deal? His deal? Well, I saw him first. He knows jocks. Why don't you find out? Yeah, let's push them together. I'm sure he would love to talk to a beautiful woman like you. Ugh, Alice, if you keep that up, I'm going to fall in love with you. You laugh as she adjusts the top of her dress. How do I look? Fabulous, of course. Olivier looks up as if he can feel your gaze and his eyes land on you. A smile slowly spreads across his face and he holds up a hand in greeting. I should wave, call him over, blow him a kiss. Let's just wave. You wave to Oliver and his smile grows. He excuses himself from his conversation and makes his way over to you. How nice to see you again, Alex. Hello, Oliver. Nice to see you again. I hope you'd be here. Isn't this lovely? My friend Emily has... <laughs> My friend Emily here planned the whole thing. Oliver turns to her with a gracious smile. I can't thank you enough for putting this together. It means the world to Jacques. Even Alfie and Gabriel seem charmed by Olivier as he reaches into his jacket pocket. Jack refuses my help directly, but I thought you might accept my donation. He hands her a slim envelope with a check inside. Her smile grows wide as she looks at it. He's rich, huh? Oh my goodness, thank you so much. Wow, Olivier, that's so generous. What about the auction? You're making me swoon. Let's ask what about the auction. Are you going to bid on anything? I'm afraid I can't attend the auction. Unfortunately, I have a work obligation I must get to, but I do wish I could stay. I'm certain the auction will be as lovely as the rest of this evening. Emily beams at the praise. Oh, this late at night? That's disappointed. Well, you're missing out. Let's just say you're missing out. It sounds like there are going to be some pretty great items to bid on. Yeah, like Gabriel's girlfriend. Olivier lets a surprise laugh as Gabriel frowns. I'd be sad to miss it. He smiles at the rest of the group. It was lovely to meet you all and to run into you again, Alex. Perhaps this won't be the last time our paths cross. Olivier, I'm counting on it. Have a good night. It was great to see you. Let's just say it was great to see you. I'm sure we'll run into each other again at the bookstore. I look forward to it. Ollie. <laughs> I said I had a really terrible French accent. Um, Jax has arrived and he yells across the courtyard when he sees Oliver. Oliver cringes at the nickname. He's the only one who still calls me that. I better go say hello. Enjoy the rest of your evening, Alex. I should. Shake his hand, kiss his cheek, say goodnight. Good night, Oliver. Oliver. Good night, Alex. Minnie watches him go wistfully, letting out a long sigh. I need a drink or a cold shower. <laughs> you and Emily laugh as Gabriel shakes his head. And I need to get the rest of the food set up. He and Mindy walk away, leaving you with Emily and Alfie. Is there anything I can help? Uh, uh, sorry, is there anything I can do to help? Just enjoy yourself. There's... Sorry to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. I just need to know where to put these. You should find Audrey holding a basket full of beautiful corsages and boutonneries. I did not say that right. Emily's face lights up, but Audrey's expression is unreadable. Audrey, I'm so glad you're here. This is Alex. I believe you two have met. 
There's a glimmer in her eyes as she responded. Yes. We have. What kind of anyway? Did you bring me flowers? The flowers are lovely. What kind of anyway? We haven't been officially introduced or anything. Well, no you have, and just in time. She motioned to the basket of corsages and boutonnieres. One of these is for you. They're a gift for all our most special guests this evening. She takes the basket from Audrey's hands. Alfie and I will pass these out. Audrey, you will be a doll and help Alex put hers on? She looks from behind Audrey as they leave the two of you alone. I think Emily ships us, huh? So that means we're going to end up with Audrey. <laughs> Audrey clears her throat and extends a corsage towards you. May I? You hold out your hand. Yes. I love that now that I know your name, or only because I can't do it. Which is only because I can't do it. I don't want to disappoint Emily by not wearing it. I can't help but put it on myself. Right, of course. She slips the corsage on your wrist, adjusting it slightly. As she pulls away, her fingers brush her skin, and you feel an unmistakable spark, intrigued, nothing. Let's just say intrigued. You look up and you find your, her eyes on yours, her gaze intense. Alex. Dude, we've known each other for like a day. <laughs> it's the first time she has said your name, and the word is heavy with emotion. Yes? I am glad that you're here tonight. Her hand moves up to yours, her mouth curving into a smile as your palms touch. The night is more beautiful with you in it. That's so nice. But then she stiffens and lets your hand fall. Anyway, I should go make sure the rest of the flowers are okay. Enjoy your evening. Oh my god, I've been building for an hour. <laughs> These episodes are so long. I the episode on choices and on um, episode, I guess, were all much shorter. Like, I would finish them in 10 minutes. These, I've been filming for an hour. Obviously, it takes me longer because I've been speaking and adding my own commentary to it. But I feel like I probably would still take this. I feel like this would probably still take me a long time, huh? Emily, who had been eyeballing the two of you from across the courtyard, rushes over as Audrey it leaves. Well, Emily... There's definitely a spark. I'm not sure. Well, what? There's nothing going on between us, Emily. Oh. Emily frowns. Oh, no. Well, it sure looked like there was. Anyways, it's time to get this party started. I'll see you this- I'll see you after the auction. She squeezes your hand excitedly before taking off towards the head of the table. Still trying to make sense of what just happened with Audrey, you go to find your own seat. You find your card between- your you, you find your name card- in between Mindy and Gabriel. The, tr the, car blah, blah, blah. the chair on the other side of Gabriel is still empty. Camille isn't here yet? Gabriel shakes his head, looking annoyed. I text her, but she hasn't replied. Well, she better get here soon. The date she's auctioning off is our top item. Mindy, you could fill in. I'm sure she'll be here. Is it that important? Let's make Mindy fill in. I think that'd be funny. I'm sure some eligible French bachelor would snap you up in a second. Mindy laughs and rolls her, and rolls her eyes. Oh, sweetie, like anyone here could afford me. <laughs> oh, is this cami shade? Excuse me, everyone. You all turn to Jacques, who is standing at the head of the table, looking teary-eyed. And that boo the uncle has been in my family for almost 200 years. Oh, no. <laughs> that means we have also been a part of this community for almost 200 years. For our American friends who may not know, boo de uncle means ink drinker. I believe it is something like your bookworm? What? Are you sure, load older say? Emily nods encouragingly. I'm not sure what that was. That you ink drinkers would do this for me means more than words can say. Which for book, which for a man who sells books, it really is something. He sniffles, and Emily immediately wraps him in a hug before he takes his seat at the table. That was so sweet. Emily turns back to the crowd with a wide smile. All right, everyone, it's time for the auction portion of our evening. Why don't we start all things off with a bang? Our first auction item is a date with... Her grand lands on the empty chair beside Gabriel, and he raises his hand apologetically. A date with... She frowns, and her eyes light up when they shift to you. Oh no. A date with our new American friend, Alex. Lu uh, I almost said Lily. Obviously, she's not Lily. Emily is not a girl's girl. What is this? She can't just do this to us. She screwed us over. Anyway. Oh my god. This should be fun. I'm going to kill her. Anything for jocks. Oh. 
Let's say I'm gonna kill her. No way am I going up there. As if she can read your mind, then he reaches over and squeezes your hand. You can yell at Emily later. Right now, Jax and the bookstore need you. You remember Jax's expression before, so full of hope and reluctantly raised from your chair. Emily pulls you into a tight hug when you reach your side and whispers in your ear. You're a lifesaver, Alex. I owe you one. She <laughs> this is what Emily does. Emily's actually very accurate to the series. She just makes other people do things that she wants to get done, I feel. Emily, this is great. You definitely owe me. Don't worry about it. Let's say she definitely owes her, and I mean big time. Emily laughs apologetically as she pulls away. I saw you eyeing that bag in my closet. Do this for me and it's all yours. She turns back to the crowd with a wedding smile. So what do you say? We start the bidding at 500 euros? Emily grins as you give her a disbelieving look. 500 euros? That's way too high. I'm worth more than that. This is crazy. I'm worth more than that. A date with me is worth at least a thousand. Your stomach turns as seconds tick by, each one somehow longer than the last. No one wants to date us. That's so embarrassing. I'm going to die of embarrassment if no one bids on me. This is 1,000 euros, Audrey. There are a few impressed gasps, but you barely hear them as you lock eyes with Audrey across the courtyard. Oh my god, did Audrey really just bid 1,000 euros to go on a date with me? <gasps> Chapter complete. What is this? There's another chapter? Okay, I'm gonna exit the story because this already took way too long. But yeah, hopefully there's another chapter. I thought that this, since it releases weekly, I thought there'd only be one chapter. But there looks like there's another one left, so maybe I'll do that one next. So yeah, hopefully this saved. Um, I noticed that sometimes my MacBook doesn't save my video recordings, which is so annoying. So. Hopefully that's saved. So yeah, we're gonna go back to chapter two here soon, so bye.